tools. His table had been placed to be out of reach of the weapons lining on the wall, but that put him close to the other wall. John managed to get around the table to it and began examining them. There was a metal cu cupboard that appeared to be locked, but he looked through the rest. There was a toolbox that he thought was locked at first, but eventually he realised it was only stuck. After enough effort, he got it open and looked through. Most of it was random aging tools, but he found a screwdriver that looked to be in good shape. Could he use it to escape? He saw several possibilities, but at the moment he heard Lizzie return, it was too late. Though John spent all of Saturday tense, Lizzie was uh, showed no signs of intending to hurt him. The night she brought a mattress and bedding down to the basement and set up close enough that he could lie down on it. When he woke up on Sunday, he felt strangely normal, still tense, but the situation was far from ordinary. But in a strange way, he had learned to deal with it. That day passed almost normally since Lizzie had brought him his books. He tried to work through his homework just like often did like he often did on a Sunday. Lizzie stayed with him most of the day, working as well. She made meals for them both in the basement and upstairs, but she always stayed close. He hoped for a chance to evaluate his options more but he never spotted it one since uh, right I was busy and you dare interrupt me like that but never spotted one since she was always leaning in to smile at him for from the stairwell the only useful thing he learned was that the basement door was apparently unlocked except at night if he could somehow get unchanged from the table, he had a shot at getting out. When Monday drew dawned, he crashed almost immediately and didn't even get out of bed. That was common on fortification when he didn't have friends to distract him, since all he could do was wallow in himself. It felt worse than usual. His world, his world wasn't getting just grey. His depression was filled with flecks of anger and confusion. Only then did he realise he hadn't taken any medication since Friday morning. When Lizzie entered the, that morning, she immediately saw how badly he was doing and rushed to the mattress. At f first, fussing with his sheets before realising the problem went deeper than that. John, what's wrong? Other than you keep me here? No, I'm sorry. No. If I let you go, you'll just hate me. It will ruin everything. Then at least bring me my Paxitone. Paxitine. It's in the shelf above the sink to the... No. No, I won't bring it to you. I can't... I destroyed it. What? But I needed that. I need that. You understand how serious my condition is, right? I know, I really do. But you shouldn't take their drugs. No, not theirs. But you were taking something before Paxitin, right? Tell me what it was. I'll go get some for you. I want you to get better, John. But I won't let you take anything from Kyotech. Thinking back, John tried to remember the medication that he had seemed to do some good. Maybe they weren't as good as Paxi time, but they would be better than nothing. Okay, just wait here. Apparently, just remembering all the chemical names he listed, Lizzie hopped up the stairs and practically slammed the door in her hurry on the way out. Abruptly alone, John realised that he had another chance to act. Uh, look for tools. 
Using the screwdriver he found earlier, John began to work on the metal cupboard. The lock apparently appeared to be simple one, and he could just wedge the screwdriver between the door. He was afraid he'd make marks that Lizzie might notice, but the cupboard was really already a battered old thing. After a lot of tedious poke, uh, poking at it, John was starting to worry he wouldn't accomplish anything. And then, out of nowhere, he managed to budge the latch just a little. Filled with new energy, John kept jabbing at it, occasionally pushing it just a little further. Eventually, he managed to open the cupboard. It made a painfully loud sa a sound, but he was fairly confident Lizzie won't be wasn't back yet, and now he could finally see the, the tools inside. His first feelings was that he had wasted his efforts. Most of the tools were useless things, like rakes and mops. But then he spotted it leaning at the back, a crowbar. It was a little old, but it looked sturdy. But through the through the legs of the table were metal and the joints hold on but through the legs of the table were metal the joints to the top wasn't strong maybe he maybe if he stuck it with the crowbar shock it with the crowbar he could be uh, bend it a little the idea filled him with a little hope but he rejected trying it immediately. He had wasted too much time and there would be no way to hide an act action like that. He needed to escape just after Lizzie left. Instead, John replaced the cl crowbar close to the cupboard and returned to his seat, hoping the fact that it was unlocked was, wasn't obvious, too obvious. Eventually, Lizzie returned, bearing a large white sack. She triumphantly emptied it on the table, dumping an entire pile of pills in front of him. She'd gotten every drug he mentioned, even the prescription ones. He hated to think about the nasty consequences if she tried to give him all of these at once. But instead, Lizzie just brought it him a glass of water and set it down beside the pile. Take anything you need to get better, okay? I'll just leave these here, but you can just but you can ask for more water whenever you want. Thank you. Of course, John. I'm doing this I'm doing all this because I want you to get better. Uh-huh. He felt like telling her that being held against his will wouldn't help, but her expression looked so sincere that he couldn't bring himself to say it. How had she gotten the prescription medication anyway? He found the one on that he had been most satisfied with just before Miss Smith switched him to Paxitine, Paxitine and took his first dose. Lizzie smiled brightly, then skipped back upstairs. After lunch on Tuesday, Lizzie started carrying electronics down the stairs. He blinked in confusion as she brought down the TV and started hooking everything up uh, together. Or at least attempting to. After a moment, she sighed and looked at him sheepishly. Do you know how this works? I can try to get it, get it figured out. He got up and did his best to help. She had a, pr a pretty nice VCR leading him to wonder why she had it and didn't know how to put it together. It wasn't like someone else would have brought it for her. Do you not use this much? Never. I don't really watch television. Like at all? No. She had seemed weirdly empathetic about a lot of things, but he thought she just wasn't into pop culture. Yet now, something in her voice made him suspect it was something else entirely. What about music, then? I don't listen to music. Huh? Really? Well, what about books? Only non-fiction, that seems useful. The rest all feels so pointless. What do you do for fun, then? 
She stared back at him so long he was afraid she might just ignore the question. Well, sorry I asked. I do enjoy a few things now, thanks to you. I spent a lot of time collecting all those knives because I thought they would be useful, but now it's a little different. Now I can imagine myself protecting you. All the details about grips, edges, they're ju not just details now, they, they interest me. So he'd given her uh, an interest in knives, fantastic. Anyway, I thought, oops, I thought maybe I could enjoy a movie if I watched it with you. Is that okay? We might as well try. I had it all put together for a while. Anyway, we can try it. Lizzie brought a chair and sat beside him as they sat and watched the tape. He was grateful that she at least watched the movie instead of him. It was nothing at all like how watching a film with a girl was supposed to be. According to his friends, Lizzie didn't seem remotely nervous during the scary parts and, to his surprise, didn't seem to care about the romantic parts. Then again, he didn't think he really would want her to react, to, uh, react that way. It definitely wouldn't feel like who she was. To his surprise, John found himself enjoying it too. Maybe his old meds were doing their job better than he thought. When it finally ended, Lizzie gave him gave a small smile that he thought represented authentic satisfaction. Then she immediately turned to him. We should watch something together again, but I think I'd rather make our own movie. His mind immediately flashed to making porn together and he had to force that thought away. What kind of movie? I I would like to just film you. Here, working or eating or anything. I could watch it later. Really? Wouldn't that be boring? No, watching you could never be boring. Oh, this is such a good idea. I'll go buy one of those video recorders and... Not to cut you off, but wouldn't that be incriminating evidence? Huh? Fuck. What was he saying? Well, it's too late to go back now. I mean, it's not legal to hold someone like this, and your, and your basement looks kind of suspicious. You wouldn't want someone to find it later. Ah, uh, you care? Lizzie embraced him cheerfully. And despite himself, John felt a flicker of joy when she was happy. She seemed so purely happy. You're right, of course. And I'm glad you're thinking about keeping me safe, even if I want it to be the other way round. John is so kind. But maybe later we can make our own movies, okay? Okay? Uh, yeah, maybe. Why the hell had he just done that? Having a tape of her behaviour would have been the perfect way to get the police to take him seriously if he managed to escape. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as soon as he had that thought, John regretted it. He didn't want to see Lizzie hurt or, and hated the idea of her going to prison despite what she has, was doing to him. Despite the situation, he still thought of her as a sweet girl who wasn't entirely well. She deserved help, not punishment. Was this Stockholm Syndrome? Was she wearing him down just like she planned to? The idea disturbed him, but it didn't change how he felt. He needed to find another way. Okay. Hello and welcome back to Crimson Grey when I'm trying to get the true ending. Now, um, I think this is where I left off in like the seventh video. Because I've all the bits of it was cut out before, and yeah. Uh, on Wednesday, Lizzie wanted to watch another movie, but John suggested that he that might be too many. Instead, they passed the day quietly, working and chatting, ignoring the fact that he was chained to the table. He was feeling better than he thought he could without Paxidine. So his mind shifted to what he could do to improve his situation. Chatting with Lizzie was pleasant, but it wouldn't resolve their problem. But what should he say? Try to leverage 
the last few friendly days into her letting him go, just try to make her relax more or convince her that he wouldn't leave her. Uh, so, Lizzie. Uh, start a conversation about morality. Hey, do you mind if I ask a random hypothetical question? Ask anything you want. Say a train is running down a track and it will kill five people. You could pull a lever to switch it to switch the train to another track where it will only hit only one person. Do you pull it? Who are the people on the tracks? Huh? That's not supposed to matter. It's just a hypothetical random people. No one you know. I don't pull the lever. I would leave. He had to fit a feeling he knew what she was going to say, but say I'm not the first tr I'm not on the first track and the train is heading towards say if I'm on the first track and the train is heading towards me if the lever was w would make the train hit five other people instead of instead would you pull it? Yes. What if there were ten people? The number doesn't matter to me, John. I would kill a hundred people, a thousand people, a thousand. Jesus Christ, psychopath. Oh, jeez, that face. And then I would go and find a person who put you on the track and kill her. Kill her? Whoa! And the train conductor and everyone on the train who didn't help. If I'm the only choice, if my only choice was to switch the train to come hit me, I would do it. I would do anything. Lizzie, I don't want you to kill yourself for me. Ah, oh, you're so sweet, but no. You have to survive. I want us both to be together forever. But if I can give my life to save yours, I it would be worth it. How would you answer the question if a teacher asked it? One I already did last year. I pretended to be flustered and I said I couldn't pull the switch. So you do understand how most people view this. I'm aware of how they think, but I don't understand it. What they think doesn't really matter to me. But if I say the wrong things, people will interfere with my life. So I've had to learn to say the right things. I did that with you too, John, at first, because I was afraid you wouldn't love me, the real me. But you will eventually, I'm sure of it. That made things a little uncomfortable for the rest of the day, but John hoped that he, if he ever did, somehow get strapped to the tracks, Lizzie... Lizzie was the one nearby. <laughs> Hell yeah. The next morning, <clears throat> he took his pills with a glass of water as usual. Lizzie waited until he was done and then gave him a warm smile. I hope it's helping. You seem happier, John. I feel better than I expected. Pretty good, actually. It was actually strange how good he felt and it was easier not to think about that at the moment. Instead, he brought up an issue that he'd been thinking about for a while. That reminds me, I've been meaning to ask you, you've run out of Nalsin, right? I haven't taken it for days. I destroyed the rest of it the day before our date. You destroyed it? Why? It was useful, it helped me understand, but it wasn't myself while I was taking it. I wish you reconsidered taking the medication. We can't handle everything ourselves. Sometimes we need help. You don't understand. It's not that simple. Then explain to me. I wasn't myself. It was like someone had imprisoned me and took out, took my place. Imagine. Imagine if your own medication meant meant that you could never feel sad again. Just constant manic happiness. That does sound horrible. I'm sorry I made you take it. Don't say that. It was useful. Having things be in a different 
for a while made it easier to see how everything f fits together. But I couldn't take any longer than that. I wanted to be myself again. Koitech doesn't want to help people, John. They just want to control them. Are, are you just saying that metaphorically? Uh, or do you actually know something about them? No. No? Abby was addicted because of them. I never cared about her, but I saw what Koritech with drugs did to her. They didn't change who she was. She was always horrible. The drugs just made her identity obvious. Not like you, John. You steam you're still so kind, even though you were taking that drug. But they won't be satisfied with that. Are you serious? Saying Kotech is some kind of conspiracy? Conspiracy? No. I don't think so. They just want money, and they're willing to cut the corners to make it. I don't care what they do to any anyone else, but you needed to stop taking that drug. You need to see clearly. He almost wanted to believe her. Coritech was a huge company, and those weren't exactly known for their ethics. It was plausible that they had been testing some dangerous drug on Lizzie's mother. It had probably been too dangerous for adults. Uh, pro it had been probably too dangerous for adults, but it had a magnified impact on developing ch child. Did Lizzie see that on some level? Or was she just paranoid about the company? Sometimes she seems so... And you should stop seeing Miss Smith. She's trying to steal you away. I'm sure of it. Lizzie, don't be ridiculous. She's ten years older than me. And the school counsellor. I can't trust her. You can't. You shouldn't. Calm down. No one is going to steal me away. She stared at him as she desperately wanted to believe his words. A moment later, she gave an odd little half shrug. I came in to say I need you to run some errands today. So I have to leave you alone, okay? John? Yes. Yeah, sure. She left the room and John knew he had a rare opportunity, but he found himself sitting and thinking. Was it possible that she was right about the Paxi team? He hadn't taken it in several days and after a few low points, he actually felt much better than usual. The terrible irony of depression medication was sometimes a drug could make you feel what even worse, not better. Maybe that changed he, he'd attributed to Paxitine when the change in his life. Okay. There couldn't be anything to her conspiracy theories, but he could believe that Koitech would push their drugs on anyone with depression, even if it had mixed results. Things like that happen all the time. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Abruptly, he resolved that if he made it out of the basement, he had stopped taking Paxitine and, as an experiment, he could stay on his old med old meds, see if they, he did better. What 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 is going on with me? Come on. Uh, just if he actually showed signs of improvement, even Miss Smith would be happy to let him take the older drugs. Regardless, for now he needed to take stock of his options. Take some kind of action while he had the opportunity and energy for it. He felt like he spent too much time thinking to make an escape attempt, but maybe he could accomplish something else. Hmm. Accomplish something else? What could you accomplish? Oh, I can't... Ah, oh, okay. I... Make something for Lizzie. Deciding his best bet was to try to encourage Lizzie good nature. John set to working with the kitchen supplies he, she left nearby him. His options without a stove were limited, but he did his best to make her something that looked real... Looked like real effort had been put into it. 
He was no chef, but he thought she would like anything he made with his own hands. Strangely, the act of making something for her helped him forget about the fact that he was chained in the basement. The situation might be messed up, but perhaps there was a core of something salvageable. When Lizzie saw his gift, she blushed and then took it away hurriedly. Hurriedly. John blinked, but he didn't even have time to object. The next time he saw her, though, she was beaming. On Friday, John woke up, stretched, yawned, scratched at the shackle on his leg, and got up to brush his teeth. It was only while brushing his teeth and staring at the wall of knives that he realised how normal this bizarre situation had become. Uh -huh. One week ago, Lizzie had been asking him out on a date, and they had gone out like a normal couple. It felt like a lifetime ago. So I'm pre pretty sure. So I'm just going to get to... Good morning. Can you believe it's been a week already? I'm just thinking that, actually. Hasn't it been wonderful? Oh, God. I wouldn't call it wonderful. You know, we hadn't done anything that we couldn't have done without the kidnapping. But that's the point. Lizzie chose... Oh, God. You're saying I'm not normal? Uh, and I wouldn't want you to be. Good, good. I want to learn... Disagree. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. What? But John, I love you. Yes, but if you were convinced you, your love required you to use that knife on me, you would do it. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. What? If you were afraid of me, you never would ha You never would never have been so honest. But even with all my weapons right here, you didn't try to lie to me. Oh, John, I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. I would never, ever want to hurt you, but I'm so happy you said what you really think. John swallowed uncomfortably. He wasn't sure where he had expected honesty to go, but this was better than he, ex than he expected. That's the John I love. I want you to accept me. Just like that, and you do, even though you're still worried. She wrapped her arms around his neck, still carrying a knife, and kissed him briefly on the forehead. After that, she lowered her face to his hesitant, hesitant for a moment, but in the end, she pulled back without kissing him on the lips. Oh, you have no idea how much I wanted to do much I want to do right now, but I'll wait, I'll wait, until you trust me. Do you trust me enough to let me go? Soon, darling, soon. Well, that's something new. On Saturday, Lizzie announced that she wanted to make a huge meal for both of them on the last day. She asked what he wanted to eat, then headed out for a shopping trip. As soon as he was sure she was actually gone. John got up and took a deep breath. He didn't have much time left before the vacation was over. But what did he want to do? Use a crowbar on the shackles. John carefully retrieved the crowbar and then stood by the table for a while, just trying to motivate himself enough to actually do it. Eventually, he decided he didn't have a choice. He couldn't come this far and back down now. He took a deep breath, pulled back and swung. Okay. His first blow glanced off unnecessarily. Is that ever going to stop? Thank you. And he nearly gave up then. But then he forced himself to try again. This time the table creaked. Blow after blow, he slowly bent the table's leg inwards. It 
made a horrible noise, but that was just motivating him to hit harder. There was no hope of going back now. At least the table's leg struck inward at the awkward angle. John dropped the crowbar and bent over and catching his breath, he knew he should check if it was enough, but now he almost didn't want to. Eventually he bent down and tugged at the shackle attached to the table leg. With enough tugging he managed to pull it off and then he was free. Maybe suddenly unable to deal with the uncertainty, John grabbed the loose chain and so he wouldn't trip over it and r rushed to for the stairs. Yes, the door was unlocked. He stepped out into the hallway and took a deep breath. Lizzie might have locked the front door, but he could always break a window if necessary. But now that he had gotten this far, John hesitated. What now? Um... Um... Stay in the basement? John set the screwdriver. Hey, hey, I was reading that. <laughs>